the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. One of the most famous and known chapters in the book of Psalms is Psalm 23. Even unbelievers can recite this psalm. It is one of the many passages of Scripture that has given hope to many people in their darkest hour. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But their verse we are going to focus on today, Psalm 23, 5 to 6. There are two major interpretations of this verse, and in all honesty I agree with both because they both show the goodness of God. Our God is a good God. We are going to look at both interpretations of this verse in this sermon. The first interpretation we are going to look at is that this verse describes a gracious host as he provides a banquet for an honored guest. In this interpretation, David perceives himself as the Lord's honored guest. The second interpretation is that it continues the metaphor of the shepherd-sheep relationship. In this interpretation, David likens the Lord's generosity to that of a shepherd who generously prepares a feast for his sheep, spreading the food on a table or trough. Now let us look at the first interpretation. In this interpretation, God is the host. You are the guest of honor. The goodness and care suggested by the prepared table is set right in the midst of the presence of my enemies. The host's care and concern doesn't eliminate the presence of my enemies, but enables the experience of God's goodness and bounty even in their midst. And I think, at one time or another in your life, have seen God prepare a table before the presence of your enemies, before the people writing you off. The truth is we all have enemies. No one gets through this life without enemies. Jesus was perfect and he still had enemies. We all know you and I are not perfect, so we are bound to have enemies. There are people who are working around the clock just to make sure you don't make it. There are people trying to ensure your business fails there are people who are hoping to ensure that you fail in your education. Don't be naive. Not everyone is happy for you. There are people hoping for you to die of a disease. But what this verse tells us is that although these are there, God will bless you in front of them. Although they may wish evil on your life and your loved ones, God will still bless you. Isn't that wonderful that we serve a God that does need permission to bless you? He doesn't require the world to love you. He doesn't require people to love you in order for Him to bless you. Isn't that wonderful that no matter what they do, no matter the plans they have for you, no matter the evil counsel they have taken for your downfall, no matter all the talks they have made about you, He will still bless you and they will have front row seats and see the blessing of the Lord clearly and they will not be able to do anything. God will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. These enemies cannot do anything. If you are crying that you have too many enemies at work in the neighborhood, it is because you don't know God. You are crying because you don't know what God is capable of doing in the presence of your enemies. God will set a table in their presence. Do you know the God you serve? Do you know how powerful He is? It is ignorant to believe that your enemies can hinder the blessings of God in your life. God said in Jeremiah 32 verse 27, that behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God is the God of all flesh. He is not only the God of all flesh, but also all beings in the universe, spirit being, all physical beings. God made it all. God is everything. Now tell me, what are your enemies before him? Maybe you don't know your enemies are God's enemies. Exodus 23 verse 22. 
But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Leave your enemies. Leave those who think they can stop God from blessing you. Let them come and say they will wait and see if you will make it. Look, they said the same thing to Paul. Some people made a vow that they will not sleep nor eat until they see Paul dead. They died instead. Look at the story of Haman and Mordecai. Haman prepared gallows for Mordecai. Tell me, you were the gallows used on? The goodness of God for you cannot be stopped by a billion enemies. Let the whole world try to stop your blessings and see what God will do. You are precious in the sight of God. When he says he will bless you, the best thing they can do is just watch. The goodness of God will show in your life. God will be so good to you that the whole world will see it. God will be so good to you that you will be shocked. God will be so good to you that your enemies will never be able to understand why. God will be so good for your future. God will be so good to you in your career. God will be so good to you that you will be surprised yourself. Even though God will set a table before you in the presence of your enemies, there is something I want to tell us to do. We must position ourselves to where God will be able to set the table for us. We must position ourselves to the place where God will send that blessing on us and no man can stop. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now looking at this verse from the second interpretation, table does not necessarily mean table as in furniture. It can be used for something that is spread out. Flat places in hilly countries were referred to as tables and sometimes shepherds would stop the flocks in this flat area to allow them rest. Sometimes the shepherd would spread out food in the trough and the sheep would eat and sleep in on this table. Many Bible scholars favor this interpretation because it continues in the metaphor and theme of our Lord being a shepherd and us being the sheep. Whereas the first interpretation changes the metaphor from our Lord being a shepherd to a host, this interpretation demonstrates the protective nature of our God as the shepherd protects the sheep from wild animals. The shepherd intentionally spends time walking throughout the tabletop area, wanting to be seen leaving his scent, if you will, intentionally making the wild dogs or mountain lions wary and uncomfortable. The good shepherd leaves nothing to chance when it comes to the welfare of his flock. The shepherd paid close attention to his flock and would examine them as they entered the fold to be sure that none of them were bruised, injured or sick from eating poisonous plants. Now in your life, how does it make you feel that you have a God who is watching over you and is interested in your welfare? I read a quote which explains this interpretation so well, it stated, The shepherd also goes ahead of his flock to add or ensure that certain things are prepared and ready. He checks the water supply. He looks for the best places for his flock to bed on. In other words, he pays special attention to every detail, ensuring that his flock has the best possible stay at his table. His table. This table. You cannot help but note how the shepherd permits no one less than himself to be the one to prepare it. He doesn't ask his disciples. He doesn't ask even the angels. How good is it to know that Jesus himself is the one who prepares our table. He is the one who goes ahead of us, leading us in every situation, anticipating what dangers we may encounter and keeping us safe. Are you going into the hospital soon? We all do at one time or another. He will go ahead of you to prepare the way. Will some type of danger creep into your life soon that you are not aware of? Well, he is aware of it, and he goes before you to prepare your table. Whichever interpretation you lean towards, it is important to note the goodness of God, the fact that you have a God that loves you and cares about you, and that is interested in your life. God has no hidden agenda other than loving you. God is a good God. Don't miss all 
also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.